used to having this goofy headset on. My mic my other microphone broke. And I'm just trying this to see. It was what they had at Radio Shack, so I feel kind of like a yuppie with this thing in my face, but Brother Rick is he has a clear one, so this is all like clear and this is all clear and fancy, and this thing I just I don't know, it bothers me. <laughs> they didn't have anything like that there, no. Radio Shack. Well, it is Dundas, you know. You're not going to have like a whole lot in Northfield or Dundas, right? Anyway. Brother Paul, so you've been sick? Same thing I had? Tired all the time, fatigued, can't breathe? Okay. Yeah, I had all that too. I didn't mean to give it to you. I had that too. I had it in the chest and then it worked up to my head and this week I have had such bad sinus headaches. It's crazy. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen, that's right. Old brother Paul, he's a warrior. Keeps going. You know what happened, don't you? Brother Paul, you you know what happened, don't you? We got um, we got in we got in there into uh, that rain, and we were outside in that rain. Then we got in that air conditioning. We were driving down the road, that cool air. I think it just made us sick. I think we're getting old. Yeah, and you really yelled a lot. Your nickname is Old Yeller. Uh, amen. <laughs> hey, I got some great news. Brother Finney talked to the chief of police. And boy, it's been an interesting time here. The chief of police in Faribault, Minnesota. It has been an interesting time for the last three days with the chief of police. They were playing phone tag back and forth, sending emails back and forth. And Brother Finney did a lot of education. I mean, he taught them a lot about the law. And basically what happened was Fairbo folded. They just they said, okay, you're right. That is the law. That's the way it's supposed you, you can you can preach out in the open air. There's there's no it doesn't break any city ordinances. It's not against the law. Um, you have your First Amendment rights to do that. The officers were wrong to threaten arrest. They were wrong to you know, uh, threatened to cite you and arrest you for preaching. Uh, he gave a directive to his officers how to deal with with us when we come, as far as how to deal with people that have freedom of speech to to preach the Bible. Uh, and they understand that now. Um, he said, if you want to call him, you can call him and talk to him. He said, if you want to press charges against that guy that poked you or whatever, you know. He said, he said, you could do that if you wanted to. I said, I don't think any of us want to do anything like that. All we want to do is preach. We don't, we don't have any problems with anybody. We don't want to cause any trouble. You know, We didn't want to do any of this in the first place. All we want to do is preach. That's what we went there to do. Um, so he understood that. And let's see, what else did he say? You know, He offered to give all the information we needed, but we don't need it now, obviously. So, amen. So that's good. The Lord, uh, the Lord blessed, and and we'll be going back to Faribault sometime when Brother Paul feels better. So, <laughs> amen. We'll be going back there and and uh, and preaching there. So yeah, they they understood. It took a it took a lot of education, you know, a lot of uh, of teaching and educating uh, them to get them to understand what the law is. And what God expect expects from them, as far as you know, or what the Constitution expects from them, anyway, I should say, uh, what God expects is a lot more than that. <laughs> but anyway, um, what the Lord uh, expects is for them to get saved. Amen. That's what they need to do. But uh, anyway, so 
as as uh, we've talked to them and uh, everything, it seems to be okay. They they called uh, Brother Finney and took care of it all. So we'll just wait to see what happens. You know, we'll wait to uh, see uh, if they you know change anything. But other than that, the Faribault police said they understand. The chief of police says he understands. He did talk to the the, the city of Northfield. And he talked to the the states. I mean, the city attorney. I think, or he talked to the 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 chief of police in Northfield, and the chief of police in Northfield told him, "Hey, <laughs> you know, um, your city ordinance of disorderly conduct is not going to hold up in the court of law." <laughs> Northfield was happy. We're preaching somewhere else. So. They they freely offer all the information to to Faribault. Hey, these guys can preach for you, okay? They can't you can't stop them. We hope they go there. <laughs> anyway, but um, so um, that's uh that's uh great. Amen. So we'll be going back to preach over there in Faribault and and. Uh, Everywhere, everywhere the Lord leads. So out on the streets in the open air there, and try to uh, spread the gospel there, and and, and uh, try to see people get saved. Amen. So praise the Lord for that, and God's provision there and protection. And for them that you know, we we didn't want to go to court. We don't we don't ever want to do that. That's not something we like. So. Um, but that's why there's. That's why we have a constitution. You know, that's why we have laws. That's why we have a, you know, uh, we have a bill of rights and everything. So, and uh, I'm glad they understood that. So you, you uh, just uh, praise the Lord and thank the Lord for all the prayers and everything that went out for that. And you know, we were very kind to them. We didn't do anything out of the way or anything that was would be a bad testimony as far as that goes. So. We just thank the Lord for all that and everything that he provided there. Uh, keep Brother Russ and his family in prayer as they continue to do the work of the Lord there in uh, New Richmond. So please uh, continue to pray for them at this time. That uh, They're going to get ready to hand out a bunch of flyers and, and hand out some tracks and do some preaching and stuff like that over there as well. So you pray for their efforts that the Lord would bless and uh, that folks would kind of find out about them. And, and uh, there's folks out there looking for a church, you know, and they're looking for one like one like Brother Russ's preaching. And, and uh, you know, we want to be able to let people know where we're at. So uh, people that are looking, save people that are looking for a church, amen. And he's going to get out and, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry, I got a cold. It's just, it's uh, well, it's not a cold, really. Sinuses, but anyway, it's just not doing very, very well. The breathing has been affected this week quite a bit. But anyway, so you, you just keep them in prayer. We're excited about what the Lord's going to do there and everything. And then keep in mind, next week, next Wednesday, will be my last service here for about ten days, and we'll be gone. Uh, we'll be heading out Thursday morning for vacation for about ten days or so. We'll be back the following Saturday, so it'll be about ten days or so. Um, something like that I and uh, we'll be traveling around and don't worry I'll keep my eye on y'all on on YouTube but Samuel you'll be ready to put everything on YouTube right good you'll have it down by then I'm sure you just about got it down pretty much now so anyway we'll have that and and uh, we'll still go go live on there and and just uh, Pray for, continue to pray for Nate. He's got a few. He thinks he'll be able to put his house up in about two weeks to put on the market. He'll be done with everything, and so he can sell and move here. So uh, he's thinking he'll put it up for uh, in about two weeks. So you know that's a safe, conservative time. He said to do that. So just pray about that. That that all that would come to pass. He's gotten a lot of work done this this week and last week and everything. Just pray that that'll continue, and that he'll be able to get everything done that needs to be done. That uh, you know the Lord would be honored and glorified by all that takes place there. We're looking forward to that. Really? Yeah. Well, we'll pray it goes fast, right? We'll pray that it it sells really fast, and uh, I think it will. I don't know. I just I don't think he's going to be there very long. I think he's 
he's ready to get going. I think the Lord's going to have him ready to ready to go. So we're looking forward to that, and he's excited about the ministry, excited about the Lord. He's already got some things prepared that he's working on, and the Lord has been dealing with his heart about and uh, teaching and preaching some things. And he wants to get on the street with his brother Paul and uh, get out there and preach. And keep in mind that event's coming up too, down uh, south of here. I guess, well, it's actually west, isn't it? Is it Wilmer? Is that area? Is that where it is? Yeah. Yeah, northwest. Yeah, Wilmer, I think it is where that big uh, festival is there. That if I'm back in time, you know, I'd like to go for a day and and preach out there. And uh, see what the Lord so just pray about that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we need to pray about. You know, I can't think of anything else in particular that we need to. Dan, he had to go help my brother with something. My brother was in town. He had to go help him. So he should be here. I'm sure he'll be showing up here pretty soon. But yeah, he had to help. Pray for Lee. I know he's got a heavy work schedule. I don't know where he's at right now, but uh, but I know he's got a lot going on too as well. And uh, and by the way, pray for Brother Finney uh, and all the work that he put into this. He put a lot of hours into this to help us uh, with everything, uh, with the the Faribault Police and everything. So and uh, it was great to come to that agreement. And we praise the Lord and thank God for all Brother Finney's help that he he gave there. And a lot of expertise went into that. A lot of things went into that. And and uh, we just uh, are blessed to have Brother Finney to to do that for us. Amen. To be part of this church and to help us and everything like that. So just uh, remember to thank the Lord for all that and thank the Lord on Sunday. Um, as you know, Louise got saved and continue to pray for her and her spiritual growth. It's pretty exciting what the Lord's doing in her life and and. Uh, she sent us an email on uh, earlier this week and just praising the Lord and. A lot of joy she has now, amen. Used to be a lot of dread there. Now there's a lot of joy there. So, you know, thank the Lord for that. And uh, uh, just the blessings of uh, some knowing they're saved, amen. When you know you're saved, that's a blessing, isn't it? Sleep a lot better at night, <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah, you sleep a lot better at night. So praise the Lord for that. All right, well, we'll be in, uh, you just be in prayer for those things and remember each other in prayer. Uh, remember, Carrie is with child, and just uh, continue to pray for her and, and the family, and uh, pray for Mrs. Bicey and, and the baby, and just that whole transition there. You know how that is uh, to go through. Most of you do, and, and just uh, continue to pray uh, for for that, that, uh, that they'd be taken care of as well, that, you know, if they need any help, obviously we'll be there to help. But uh, make sure you pray for the Myers. I don't know how they've been doing. I tried to call them earlier today, but didn't get through to them. Um, so I wonder how they're doing with all the flooding and everything. Um, can't be that good. I know we've been getting a lot of rain, and they're in kind of a vulnerable area there where they're at. So they had quite a bit of problems with it. I know Brother Meyer was doing a lot of help, he said, uh, uh, and everything. So just pray for them and their health and everything, and uh, that they would be okay. The Lord would bless them and take care of them. Why don't you open your Bibles up to Daniel chapter 11, please? Daniel chapter 11. And we're going to talk about something interesting here that um, it kind of goes along with what we were talking about on Sunday and what I told you that I was going to bring you as far as a, um, as far as a, um, series on this rise of androgyny that we're seeing or this transgender movement that's been coming in that I believe the Bible predicts a lot of this that has predicted most of this that was to come and we see this as we 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 see towards the end times just exactly what takes place and what has taken place uh, in our world and it's not new things we went over that through the scriptures of what what had happened before um, in in the Old Testament and as well um, as the new and and just how the Apostle Paul spoke about that and uh, he spoke about the effeminate he spoke about the things that would t would would happen in the end times and we're seeing those things come to fruition most of them are not new but 
I believe uh, most of it is the spirit of Antichrist. And what we're going to talk about tonight is, is the rise of androgyny, and we're going to talk about transgender-friendly Bible versions. And just exactly what the new versions have done to kind of do away with the, it's called gender neutral in a lot of ways, but it's really, what it is, is it's, it's transgender friendly. Um, because it's, it destroys the, the, the male-female distinctions and just kind of unifies it into one. So then there's, there's not this, this male and female distinction. Uh, now, some people think that was new. They think that that just happened with a version called the TNIV, which came out, but really it isn't. Uh, it, it, it started back with the other versions of the scriptures that they brought out. Uh, um, the you know a lot of the uh, I'll list a lot of them here today for you, but but a lot of those versions that came out, they they all kind of did away with the distinctions between the male and female. And they started to anyway. They started down that road, and then some. Some fundamentalists rose up and they said, "Hey, we got a problem with this." You, when they wanted to come out with a, a straight, when they wanted to call it a gender-neutral version, then they said, "Well, we won't have a problem with it." But see, already these modern modern versions already had the gender-neutral themes in them, and they were destroying that record. Well. Most of this is nothing more, all of this is nothing more than a spiritual battle. But when the foundations are destroyed, the Bible says, what can the righteous do if the foundations be destroyed? Now, what, what, is, what, what is happening? Well, what's happening today and what has been happening for a time is, is the Antichrist spirit or that devil spirit or Satan, whatever you want to call him, um, what his goal to do is, is, to, is to pervert the words of God. He cannot destroy the words of God. He cannot erase the words of God completely. So his goal is to what? His goal is to pervert the words of God. That's his goal. Because he'll never be able to erase it. So, in Daniel chapter 7, the Bible says this in verse number 25, "...and he shall speak great words against the Most High." and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hand until a time and times and a dividing of times. Now we understand this is talking about a specific time when the Antichrist comes to full rise, but see the point today is this, is that it's already started. Paul said that many Antichrists have went out in the world, or J John said that, the Apostle John said that. Paul said that mystery of iniquity doth already work. That work is all, that, that spiritual deception is already going on today. It's already active today. In Daniel chapter 11, verse number 36, describing the Antichrist kingdom in the end times, he says this, And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that is, that is determined shall be done. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women. It is becoming, uh, 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 sodomy or homosexuality is becoming the, the norm today in society. It's becoming. It's become. It's no longer to be viewed by many as something that is is so wicked and heinous. But it's more like ah, oh, whatever. No. Right, exactly, and that's that spirit that we're seeing today. That's at work. That is that is already at work. I, I'm telling you, what we are seeing today is is fastly approaching. Where you know what they're trying to erase the word of God, the words of God, trying to not not, not trying to completely erase, but to pervert them so much that it's not even recognizable. They can call it the Bible, but it's not really the Bible, the words of God. It's not really they're not really the words of God. Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor desire the desire of women, nor regard any God. 
for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate he, shall he honor the God of forces, and a God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus shall he do in the most strongholds with a strange God whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. So he's talking about, he's talking about a coming kingdom. He's talking about that fourth kingdom that rises. He's talking about the spirit of Antichrist. But there he's talking about the actual kingdom of the Antichrist when he takes hold and he takes the kingdom and he and he or he takes the world and he and he and he controls it. And it's a it's a it's a kingdom that is strong and it's a kingdom that is under control. But there has to be some preparatory work for that. There has to be some that has to come. And that's what we're seeing now. So the Antichrist's goal is to change times and customs. And anything that is godly or of a godly order, he wants to destroy. He cares not for God's order, nor does he recognize the difference in the sexes. That's one of the things you have to understand. This rise of androgyny is because they don't want to recognize the difference in the sexes. They don't want to recognize male and female differences. And I'm going to show you with the modern versions today what has happened and how they have changed the words of God and made them different, made different, uh, the message by doing that. And it's what, what is it for? Well, it's all to promote a basically a gender neutral, but really in all actuality, acceptance of a transgender, where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're transgender or not. Big deal. You're a guy and you want to be a girl. Okay, it doesn't matter. That's okay. It's no big deal. See, look what the Bible says they're going to say. And they're going to turn to these versions and they're going to show you. And that's why you have all the acceptance of things in the religious realm today. You have churches that are coming on board. Look at the Bible versions that these churches are using. Look what they're using and why they're accepting what they're accepting. Because they are accepting it. They are accepting it because of what they're reading. It matters. The Bible version issue matters. Because if I could pervert God's Word, if Satan could pervert God's Word, then anything, anything can, and there's no authority. You do what you want. What, 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 ends up being the author, what ends up being the slogan? Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's what ends up being the slogan. That's what ends up being the mantra, just like, the, just like Aleister Crowley, just like the... Um, the Satanist movement, just like the Luciferians, do what thou wilt. Whatever, it's no big deal. Isn't that what society? Go down, go down the, go downtown Minneapolis, or go even downtown Northfield, and take a GoPro like I do, and go talk to people and see what they say. Oh, that's no big deal. When we were out there at that sodomite rally preaching outside of there, you know what? You, know, you just want to take people's fun away. You just don't want them to have fun, is what they said. I looked at him and said, no, I just don't want him to go to hell. I just don't want him to go to hell. Somebody's got to warn him. Somebody's got to warn him. Sure not going to get it from the Methodist church down the road that has Pride Sunday. That was just like three blocks away that had Pride Sunday. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get worn there, do you? Because you know what most of them think the definition of love is? Acceptance. That's what they believe love is, is acceptance. No, that's not love. The Bible says love is reprove and rebuke. That's what the Bible says. Suffer not your, your brother to sin, but thou shalt in any wise rebuke him, don't suffer sin upon your brother. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke him. So tell him tell him his sin before it's too late. Warn him of his sin before it's too late. Oh, no, just accept his sin. It's okay. It's no big deal. No, that's not what the Bible says. Not, not this version, anyway. Amen. <laughs> he cares not for God's order. He doesn't care about it. 
That's how he'll unify everybody. That's how the Antichrist is going to unify everybody because there's no distinctions. You ever see all this thing with this one world order, new world order? Everything's got to be the same. Nobody can have nobody can nobody can have a difference of opinion. Everybody's got to agree. Everybody's got to get along. Everybody's got to do this. The Pope meeting with all the charismatic leaders uh, this last week here, the the Pentecostal leaders and some fundamental leaders, and then they're all coming together and they're all talking. Hey, we're all just gonna you know we all have the same God. God, we're all just going to come together. Yeah, I think you you all do have the same God. You all do. It's called He's called the God of this world, and that's who you have. Amen. That's who you have, and that's why you're following the Pope. You're seeing this coming today where it's not like, don't worry about men being men or ladies being ladies. Don't worry about the gender roles. They don't matter. If you want to be a boy and you were born a girl, hey, whatever you want to do. It's like Burger King. And you know when I wrote this, I didn't know this, but today it came out that they had a pride whopper. And I said, you could do it your own way with Burger King, and I didn't even know that. And I wrote that down there on my notes here. And then I found out, found out this morning that they came out with a Pride Whopper. Yeah, yeah. That's something. Oh, corporate America is going to jump on board that. You better believe that. Listen, Satan can't erase the Word of God completely. But what he can do is get people to question it. In Genesis chapter 3, we see, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So Satan's words were of a seducing nature. In the beginning, obviously, what he wanted to do was get you off of God's word, seduce you away from God's word. What's the Bible say that in the end times, uh, that uh, they'll have seducing spirits and doctrines of devils? That's what you're seeing now. You're seeing seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. You're seeing mainline churches now start to accept homosexuality and start to accept even transgender and, and whatever just to get people in the door. They're going to accept it. Now listen, the NIV has always been a perverted version of the scriptures. I want to show you something here. Virginia Mollencott, who was the stylistic editor for the NIV, she wrote a book. I want to show you the agenda from the beginning so you understand. But she wrote a book called The Divine Feminine, The Biblical Imagery of God as Female. I found this at a, at a, um, at a, at a used bookstore for like a dollar or something at some sale. And I picked it up because I, I, I remembered her name. And I couldn't remember where I remembered the name. And then I, then I traced it back to the NIV that she was the uh, a chief editor, one of the editors of, of the NIV. But what is the agenda here? Well, I want to see if you think that her editing skills or her editing ideas had anything to do with the NIV. Let's see if they did. Because when we look at the NIV, we're going to look at these passages and let's just see if the divine feminine shows up. Let's see if it does. Let's see if a gender-based agenda shows up. Because if you can have a, a gender-based agenda where there, where there is, I mean, a gender-neutral-based agenda where nothing matters, well, then guess what? If you're a transgender, who cares? Because God didn't say anything about it. God didn't, doesn't, God's not concerned with that. Right? Let's see. Let's see if this witch shows up anywhere in there. If that offends you, I'm sorry. <clears throat> but that's what she is. What's that? No, not really. Okay, uh, I want to show you some verses here, though. But this was a plot from the New Age versions to pervert the order early on. But many hypocrites like transgender version, the TNIV, well, listen, the NIV was already around, and this lady was already one of the editors of it. So what's the big deal? 
Well, let's see if there's some differences. Let's look at the NIV. Okay, in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 5, the, the King James Bible says, Jews, devout men. You know what the NIV changed it to? God-fearing Jews. Where's the men? It's gone. Acts chapter 2, verse number 14. Ye men of Judea, the NIV, fellow Jews. Huh. Acts chapter 8, verse number 27. Behold, a man of Ethiopia, the NIV, an Ethiopian. Acts chapter 10, verse number 28, unlawful for a man that is a Jew. The NIV just says, a Jew. Why is the man, why, why are they erasing that? Acts chapter 13, verse number 21, a man of the tribe of Benjamin. The NIV, of the tribe of Benjamin, omits man. Acts chapter 21, verse number 11, bind the man that owneth this girdle. The NIV, bind the owner of this belt. Why is the man gone again, huh? I am Acts chapter 22, verse number 3. I am verily a man which am a Jew. The NIV, I am a Jew. Acts chapter 23, verse number 26. More than 40 men. The NIV, more than 40 of them. What, what, why not the distinction? What happened to it? All part of the agenda. All part of the agenda. Romans chapter 11, verse number 4, I have reserved to myself 7,000 men. NIV, 7,000 omits men. Ephesians 4, 13, unto a perfect man. NIV, become mature. Another generic term being introduced into the modern versions is the word human or human being. Doing away with the man and the woman thing and, and human being. The word human or human being. This is a gender inclusive term. The word human is not found in the King James Bible at all. Not there. Interesting, isn't it? However, in the NKJV, we find the word human 15 times. In the NASB, it occurs 37 times. And in the NIV, a whopping 50 times. We'll list a few examples here. Comparing the King James Bible with the NKJV. Leviticus chapter 7, verse number 21 says, The uncleanness of a man. The NKJV says, Human uncleanness. 2 Kings chapter 7, verse number 10, There was no man there, neither voice of man. NKJV says, No one there, not a human sound. Ezekiel chapter 4, verse number 15, cow's dung for man's dung. NKJV, cow's dung instead of human waste. Why change it? Why change the words? Why take man out? So it can be gender, that's why. It can be transgender friendly. Now you say, though, maybe those people weren't transgenders. No, but the devil doesn't care. See, there's a spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, those that aren't saved. And if you think I think this lady that worked on the NIV is saved, you'd be as nutty as she is. Nope. And not because she worked on the NIV. <laughs> there's a whole lot of reasons why. But you'd have to, you'd have to look her up to, to find that out. That's right, amen. They sure don't change them, do they? Not for an agenda. Agenda. The, the, the Antichrist has an agenda. The children of disobedience has an agenda. And what is that agenda? To merge everyone together. To merge. So there's no distinctions anymore. You know what? Guess what? If you end up going to, if if you if you deal with public schools long enough and everything else, and you have children, and this agenda really kicks off even stronger, well, they're doing it now. They're going to start teaching your children that hey, it's okay. I mean, if your kid wants to be a girl, you just got to let him be a girl. 
and he's a, he, but he's a boy. Oh, that don't matter. Nothing matters. You just do what you want. The word human. Second Kings chapter, or excuse me, Ezekiel chapter four. We just did that one. John chapter sixteen, verse number twenty-one. For joy that a man is born into the world. NKJV. A human being has been born. Romans six nineteen. I speak after the manner of men. NKJV. I speak in human terms. First Corinthians two four. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom. NKJV, words of human wisdom. No gender, doesn't matter. They're all, you're all just humans. No, God made some distinctions. God laid down the distinctions in His Word, and God expects them to be followed. But when we can erase and blur all those lines and make them fuzzy so you can't see them and you don't get it, then guess what? Anything goes. You could do anything you want to do then. It doesn't matter. God doesn't have an order that matters anymore. You do what you want to do. Hebrews 12.9, we have had fathers of our flesh. NKJV, you have had human fathers. Interesting. Again, the word human is found zero times in the King James, 15 times in the NKJV, and 37 times in the ASB, and 50 times in the NIV. Another gender neutral term is the New Age Hindu term, the one used to refer to God, the one. The one is a neutral, sexless term. The King James Bible never refers to God as the one, but rather as he. The Greek is masculine, yet the, NK, yet the NKJV uses the term the one 14 times in the New Testament alone. Yeah. Just a couple of examples here. Let's see. John chapter 7, verse number 18. But he that seeketh his glory, he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true. In the NKJV, he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true. Hebrews 8, 3. It is of a necessity that this man have somewhat to offer. NKJV, it is, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. The NASB does this same thing even more than the NKJV, and the NIV does it even more than the NASB. And there's just a few from the NASB we can show you here. Luke chapter 10, verse number 16, He that despiseth me despiseth him that sent me. The NASB says, the one who sent me. they got a problem with that hymn, don't they? I wonder if that fits the whole feminist agenda. I wonder if that fits the whole gender, transgender agenda. Yeah, it all makes it all work. See, I mean, girls and boys, they're not really that much different. They're, they're just the same. That's just the way they are. There is no difference. You're all equal. Except that's not what the Bible says. Oh, yeah, the two ladies there, me and my wife are having a baby, yeah. Uh, Wow. I said, no, you're not. You had to have a man for that. Mm -hmm. Luke chapter 12, verse number 5. Fear him which after he hath killed, the NASB says, fear the one. John 6:46. Not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. The NASB except the one who is from God. John 15, 21, they know not him that sent me. NASB says, do not know the one who sent me. The one. Gender neutral Bibles, one of America's most popular Bibles has caused a stir. I want to read this quote to you. After bowing to political correctness by introducing women in gender neutral language, in its latest translation, the New International Version used by many of the largest Protestants faced throughout, faiths throughout the U.S. has come under fire by conservative groups who argue that changes to the language may alter the theological message. 
may. No, they do alter the message. For example, the 2011 version uses people instead of the more, more traditional men in some of the cases. So they change the word, they change it from men to people. Follow me, I will make you become fishers of men. 2011 in IV, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. <laughs> you like that one, Brother Paul? <laughs> Ridiculous. In the 2005 NIV, for since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a man. 2011 version says this, for since death came through a human being, did you catch that? For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead comes also through a human being. Are, are, you, are you catching that? It comes through the man Christ Jesus. Gone. Why? To fit a transgender agenda, that's why. 2005 version, if your brother sins, rebuke him, and if he repents, forgive him. 2011, if any brother or sister sins against you, rebuke the offender, and if they repent, forgive them. If anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues. 2011 version says, if any one of you, if any, if any one of you adds anything to them, God will add to you the plagues. See, the words are not the same, they're different. And the, and, and the understanding becomes different, the interpretation becomes different. The word men appears in the King James Bible of the Old Testament 2,416 times and 806 times in the New Testament. That's 3,222 times that the King James Bible mentions the word men. But in the feminist perversion of the NIV 2011, you'll only find the word men 1,027 times in their entire Bible. Why? Because it fits the agenda. It fits the times. See, the times are always changing, but God's words, they abide forever. Sure, we have it in English, and it was in Greek and Hebrew, Aramaic, right? But when you have a literal word-for-word -word translation instead of a dynamic equivalence that is done, and then this isn't even dynamic equivalence. This right here is just, this is right here is just changing everything. This is purposely changing words, purposely changing interpretations, purposely. That's the goal. To change them. Why? To make their gender inclusive so nobody, so it doesn't matter. So a transgender will pick this up and go to your church and they'll be just fine if they have that transgender version, that, that gender neutral version. Why? Because it takes out a lot of things. So then man doesn't rule. Human beings rule. See how that works? Man's not in charge. Human beings are in charge. See, everybody's equal. No, they're not. That's not what God said. That isn't what God said. I haven't looked yet. No, I don't think they would. They probably changed that to human being. <laughs> I don't know, though. I don't, I don't, I've not looked, so I can't say that for sure. The word man appears in the King James, King James Bible's Old Testament 3,105 times and 1,433 times the word man. We talked about men before. Man appears 1,433 times in the New Testament. That's 4,538 times that the King James Bible mentions the word man. But in the feminist perversions of the NIV in 2011, you'll only find the word man 1,989 times in the entire Bible. Version, whatever. It's a feminist dream come true. It's also a transgender's dream come true because then it doesn't matter. None of these things matter. See, if we can if we can destroy the foundation of the family, the home, and everything else, if we can destroy that structure which the devil's been working on for a long time, and he's been doing a masterful job, and he's had a lot of help from a lot of people, but if you can just destroy that, if you can just change that order, then anything goes. 
Because what happens? Chaos. And out of chaos comes order. What order? A new world order. A spiritual order. That's what comes. That's what the game plan is. That's when you get transgenders and, and, and whatever a man believes is right in his own heart, he'll just make a Bible version to adapt to it. And that's exactly what they've done. But it's been going on for a very long time. What are some of the words that were changed? Well, let me, let me, let me uh, I'll share some of these with you. He was changed, modified by gender-neutral translations to person, someone, or they. His was modified to your, their, or those. Man was modified to mortals, humans, humankind. Man as a male person and not the human race was changed to anyone, person, or those. Men was changed to those, people, others. Father was changed to parent. Yeah. Well, that fits, doesn't it? Because then Sally can have two moms, and then she can say, look, see, my Bible says parent. But you're not a man, you're a woman. Well, that doesn't matter. See, it says parent. Oh, come on. You really don't believe that? Well, I just had a whole bunch of sodomites tell me all those things when I was down there. At that, at, at that, loves it. <laughs> I was like, "Where's that version of the Bible?" <laughs> I don't even think. Is there really a version that says that? I mean, that's pretty bad if it says that. God doesn't hate anything, really. <laughs> wow. Okay. Tried to explain it to her. Then the rain started coming and just, <laughs> just poured down. Son was changed to child. And brother was changed to fellow believer. <laughs> wow. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female, and he blessed them, and he named them, what does it say? Mankind. That's not in the King James, is it? No, that's in the NIV. 2011. When God created mankind, he made them in the likeness of God. He created them male and female and blessed them, and he named them mankind. No, that's actually not what he said. <laughs> but we'll get to what he said. Genesis chapter 5 and verse number 2. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. That's what God said. That's what God called them. The NIV 2011 calls them something different. In Psalm 1.1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. In the NIV 2011, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. Changed it. John 14, 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. Notice that. And my my Father will love him, and we will come unto him. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved of my Father, and too I will love them and show myself to them. That's not what it said, though. Jesus replied, anyone who loves me will obey my teachings. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Anyone who does not love me will not obey my teachings. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. That's the NIV 2011. Changed. The words are changed. Why? Because of the agenda. Because it fits it. It makes it work. 
Haven't you noticed there's a there's a Bible version for just about everything out there now? Have you read the message? Have you even looked at some of the words in the message? You know, I, I don't know. I tried to find one of those online to to I did find the the NIV 2011, but the 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 TNIV I didn't find that one on there, except for the the quotes that I have I found from there, but the whole entire book I don't think I unless I can't I don't think I did anyway. But is that what they change it to? Temple prostitute. Wow. Nice. Matthew 16, 24, then said Jesus unto his disciples, If a man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. Matthew 16, 25, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The NIV says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whosoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whosoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Takes gender right out of it. Removes it. Why? So it's all unified. It's all one. Don't you see? That's all around. It's in the workforce. It's in the schools. It's in the colleges. It's in the education. And it's in the modern perverted Bibles. To what? Make everybody one. Make everybody the same. Make the sexes the same. That way, you know, ladies, you don't have to obey your husband then and follow him. You don't have to do that. Why? Because you're all the same. Everybody's equal. We're all the same. You don't have to do that. That's not what the Bible says, though. But if they find a version of the Bible that says that, then they can do what they want. See, that's that's that old King James. You don't need to worry about that. That's just that old archaic one. You got to get with the times. You got to get with the new one. Two thousand eleven NIV says, "Then God said, Let us make mankind in our image." in our likeness, so they may rule over the fish in the, in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. That's the NIV 2011. Let us make mankind. It's not what it says, though. There's the feminist origin of this gender-neutral language also. Uh, it's a style of writing that adheres, this is the dictionary version of it, that the style of writing that adheres to certain rules that were first proposed by feminist language reformers in universities during the 1970s and which have been accepted as normative in many schools since about 1980. The rules prohibit various common usages which are deemed to be sexist, as for example the use of the word man and the generic use of masculine, masculine pronouns in referring to persons of unspecified gender. A number of new words were also recommended as, for example, chairperson, spokesperson, etc., as substitutes for the sexist words in common use. Feminists hope that by means of such reforms in the universities, the languages of the whole society might gradually be reformed and that by means of such a reform in the language, the consciousness of people would be rendered more favorable to feminist ideas. Happens. Worked. It happens and it works. That's been, the, that's been the idea. That's been the example. That's been the spirit behind this. Why? Because first you just have a feminist agenda. Then you have a gender-neutral, transgender agenda that it, it works. If you change it, if you make man and woman the same, then guess what? It doesn't matter. You can be whatever you want to be. Because it doesn't matter anymore. There's no authority to say anything differently. Because they'll just take you to their version and they'll show you that, hey, see, God's okay with that. It's your Bible. You must have the wrong Bible version. It's in the mind. It's, it's, it's being prepared. See, these are calculated steps. These are all calculated steps by the devil first. He's the spirit behind it all. 
See, you got to get out of your mind that you think somebody has to be a devil worshiper to be used by the devil. Most people think you got to walk around with a pentagram or you got to be making a circle in your living room in order for you to be used by the devil, for someone to be used by the devil. No. First of all, Luciferians are not are not Satanists, and Luciferians do a lot of crazy stuff as opposed to Satanists do. And, and these other high-level elite people do a lot of things that you just don't even understand. And they're not walking around with t-shirts that say, I worship the devil. They don't have to. The kings of Israel didn't walk around with shirts that said that either, but what were they doing? They were involved with necromancy and sorcery and everything else, and they filled the land with it. Saul was the king of Israel, and what did he do? He went and visited a witch and asked her to bring up a spirit for him, a familiar spirit. It's not new. It's been going on for a long time. You know what the famous atheist Christopher Hitchens said? He remarked with respect to the gender-neutral translations. Now, this is an atheist, by the way. He says, to suggest, that, and I quote, to suggest that St. Paul, of all people, was gender-neutral is to rewrite the history as well as to rinse out the prose. End quote. <laughs> He's like, how can you even come out with a version like that? How can you even say that that's the way? That, this is an atheist. How can you even come out with something like that and even admit, now here's a man that scoffs at God. Here is a man that hates God. Here is a man that doesn't believe he even exists, and he hates the even notion of thinking about a God. And he says, for you to even look at the records, for you to even say that the Apostle Paul would even have any gender neutralism in, his, in, in, the, in what he wrote, it's just preposterous. It doesn't even make any sense. Where would you get that from? Well, Christopher, you're right. It doesn't make sense, does it? Why doesn't it make sense? Well, because the Bible's very clear about the about the gender roles. But see, we're starting to fast forward ahead and see that. Do you realize they tried this back in 1996, and they all fought them? But you know what they did? They do what everybody does, what all elitists do. They lay low for a while. They throw it out there. They watch you fight over it, and then they lay low for a while. Oh, that doesn't happen, does it? Okay. Hillary care, Obamacare. Same thing. What they do? Threw it out there. Bam, bam. People fought over it. They backed up. They waited. They waited. They waited. They waited. And bam, when they got their chance, they came back with it. It's the same thing with this. Because all Rupert, all, all these guys did with the NIV, they waited till 2011, and then they just put their gender neutral thing and made it popular and. I mean, they just, they just put it out there, then now nobody knows. Why? Because times had progressed, and feminism had had its rise, and homosexuality has come through, and, and transgenderism is popular now, and we're debating these things in schools. We're debating these things about which bathroom your, your son or daughter is allowed to go to. In public, what they're going to do. Boys dress like girls in pageants, and everything else, and what? Now it's all in your face, it's right there, so they can just slip it through there, and it's no big deal. Now you have churches that instead of before would picket events like that, have their signs that say pride. Come on in. Pride Sunday. That would fight it before. You, you know who the Methodists are, right? You know who John Wesley was, right? You, you, think, you think Wesley would have been going to Pride Sunday? You think Bob Jones Sr. would have been going to Pride Sunday? No, let me tell you what they'd be doing. They'd be standing out there with bullhorns outside of that, screaming as loud as they could. That's what they'd be doing. This is how far we've come. That's right. They regardeth not the God of their fathers. And that's exactly what it is. That's, that's the agenda. And it's in all the modern Bibles. And it's, it's, it's coming. It's, it's being popularized now. So now when, they go, when these kids go to their Sunday school classes and they go everywhere, what do they have? They've got a gender-neutral Bible. Or they've got a Bible that, that erases that, that strong masculine side of man and just kind of blends it all together. So then when Sally has two moms or Pete has two dads, then hey, it's no big deal. Or 
It says, well, my mom used to be a mom, but now she's a guy. How's that work? It doesn't work. But you got to tell you, you got you got to educate. You got to understand the spirit behind all this. What was the spirit behind all this? Same one this one had right here. Same spirit. She did the same thing. The divine feminine. She tried to say God is a nursing mother. God is a midwife. Christ is a female pelican. God is a mother bear. God is a female homemaker. God is a female beloved. God is a mother ego. God is a mother hen. And God is a dame wisdom. That was the agenda. And it worked. Worked masterfully, actually. Because now there's a ton of Bible versions with it, and that's the way it is today. And you're just going to have to, if you're going to go with these new versions, you're just going to have to accept it because that's what your Bible says. Or you're going to have to get on board with, with, with the Word of God, the King James Bible, and you're going to have to follow it. And you're going to have to stand up and stand against a transgender movement that is moving forward, that is pushing its way forward. Oh, don't talk about that, really? Because it's going to come to your children. My children don't go to public school. That's okay. They're going to use a public bathroom sometime. Mm -hmm. They'll be somewhere. You'll see them out there. It'll, it'll come. It'll be pushed. You're going to see boys dressed like girls and girls dressed like boys and be like, what's wrong with that person? And you're going to have to teach them the truth as much as they can handle at the age that they're at, but you're going to teach them the truth. You're going to have to tell them what's right and what's wrong. You're going to have to stand up for what's right. You think, you think this stuff is fun to talk about? Absolutely not. I hate talking about it. I wish I didn't have to, but it's real, and it's right there, and it's not going anywhere, and it's a plot of the devil. And you know what? You can sit in a little Comfortableville all you want to, but it's coming right to us. coming right to us and it's not backing up they're not going to stop their agenda is not going to stop they are going to keep pushing for this thing that they call equality when really what they want is participation they don't want equality they want you to they want you to be okay with it they want you to put your stamp of approval on it then they want to recruit so they have a gender neutral Bible version so they can have a church and they can say the name of Jesus and they could say what we heard a thousand times out there if we heard it. A thousand times. What did we hear them say out there at that Sodomite rally? What did we hear them say? And by the way, we hear that down the street here. God God loves, God loves everybody. And God is I had a I had two ladies tell me when I was walking down there, you just gotta you you know you this says that God God is angry with the wicked every day. And God hates all workers of iniquity. I said, well, that's what the Bible says. Yeah, we didn't make it up. Well, you got to try using love. I said, oh, so you want me to walk into there and tell everybody, well, God loves you and Jesus loves you. Yeah, we had people tell us it was, he, we just had a scripture sign. Just, I mean, it didn't even have, it didn't say, it, what did it say, uh, repent and believe the gospel or something? It wasn't even, I don't remember what it was. Yeah, let those that put their trust in the Lord rejoice. And this lady looks over at us and we're walking and she says, shame on you. Shame on you. Not so I looked at that and said, no, shame on you. You better repent, lady. But we could go back in the corner and hide in the four walls of the church and, and, and pretend that nothing's going to happen. Now, there's, en there's enough milk toast men that are limp-wristed that need to stand up and start speaking out about the truth. Why? Because all the limp-wristed real sodomites, they're boldly standing up. They're bold. They're laughing at you. Why? Well, because you got a reason you can't stand up. What is it? I don't know. Some excuse, but you'll have one. 
And you can use whatever excuse you want to not to stand up and do what's right and to preach and to tell the truth and to, and to warn men out there. You can use whatever. You, you know what? If you want a book of excuses, man, I can write one for you because I can think of a whole book of things for a reason for me not to go do anything for God. I can. I mean, I'm telling you what, man. I could sit around. Me and Brother Paul could talk for. We could talk the whole day about why we don't want to go. Couldn't we, Brother Paul? We could do that, or we could just get up and we can go. Because this agenda, it, they they have their own Bibles now. They have their own agendas now. They have their own churches. They have their own backings. And pretty soon, they're going to have the full force and weight of the Roman Catholic Church behind them. It's almost there right now. It's teetering on it. It's very close. He's already given the green light for priests to be sodomites. He's already given the green light. He's already opening the gates up. And it's coming, and they're going to have the full force, and it'll be like, well, what's a church? You know what the church is going to be? The weird guys that stand up with the King James Bible and thunder out the truth of the gospel and thunder out the truth of the law of the Lord Jesus Christ and hold it up and preach it and not be ashamed of it. And you know what? They're going to be hated of all men for his name's sake because they do it too. And fine, laugh, scoff, get mad, don't care. I'm doing right. I'm doing right. I don't care if you don't like it. I, I don't care. I stopped worrying if you thought I was cool back in junior high, okay? I stopped worrying about that a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, there ain't no quit in me till I'm out of breath. And I said by God's grace, believe me, because I know it's by His grace. But I'm not going to cower in the corner and let this whole stinking agenda ruin my children. I'm not going to let it affect them so they can't grow up in a world and understand the difference in right and wrong, the difference in a man and a woman, the difference in a lady and a man, the difference in masculine and the difference in feminine. I'm not going to I'm not going to raise them without a fight in this world so they grow up not understanding what is what. No, they're going to know the boundaries, and they're going to know the truth, and they're going to know what God expects them. And I don't care who it offends. I don't care if it's just me and my family. I'm going to, by the grace of God, do it. Because I don't have a choice. Do you want to be ashamed at His coming? Do you want to look at Jesus Christ and say, Well, Lord... You don't understand. There were so many reasons why I couldn't stand up against this. There's so many reasons why I can't speak out. You know, there'll be people that are upset at me for even talking about this. Oh, you don't need to talk about that in church. You don't need to do that. Really? <laughs> well, well, why? Because you're not educated. You don't. I mean, most people don't have a clue. They don't. They don't know what's going on out there. They don't know that there's gender-neutral Bible versions out there. They don't know that the NIV 2011 and half of your family members are probably using. They don't know it. So I just warned them. But instead of praising God for it, they'll be cursing me for it. I'll be the bad guy for it. Because that's how it works. But I've already resolved that's fine. But somebody's got to warn them. Somebody's got to tell them. Somebody's got to be hated. Somebody has to wear it as a badge of honor for Christ. I'd rather wear that badge than the one that some of these folks are going to be wearing. I was glad I took the word of God with Brother Paul and my dad, and we went out there and took the words of God instead of having a pride sticker on. We waved the banner of the Lord out there. You know, the Bible says to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. It's not enough not to just fellowship with it. You better be a part of some place that's warring against it. You better be a part of something that's warring against it. Because that's what reprove means. It means to take it to the evil, to its face, and blame it. That's what it means. And if you're not going to war against that wickedness in your church, and that's really what it's talking about. It's the church warring against it. Those people aren't my enemy out there. Those people are deceived. They're deceived. They need somebody to tell them the truth. Satan's the enemy. 
He's deceived them. You say, well, they can't be saved. They're too far gone, such as were some of you. Mm -hmm. I've heard people say that. There's a popular preacher who says, oh, sodomites, they can't be saved. Well, Paul said the effeminate, and those are sodomites, those, the effeminate, and he talks about the effeminate, which are actually, like we talked about on Sunday, those are transgenders, those are the ones that are men that dress up as females or, and they become effeminate. And then there's, and then it talks about the workers of themselves with mankind or whatever, the abusers of themselves with mankind. What is that? That's are sodomites such as were some of you. That means in Corinth, as he's talking to those people, those people were, were former sodomites, former effeminate, former druggies, rilers, sorcerers, all, everything he listed there. He's talking to them. He's not making words up. He's saying, remember, he's writing a letter to people. He's saying, look, you guys used to be this. Some of you used to be this, such as were some of you. But you've been washed. You've been sanctified. You've been saved. Listen, folks, we, we got this Bible version issue. You, th this is just another um, tool in your arsenal to be able to say, you want to know why I don't use an NIV? Let me show you why I don't use an NIV. Want to know why I don't use that NRS here, that a, all these other versions? Let me show you why. Look what they did here with the genders. Show them the truth. Those are transgender friendly versions. It's exactly what they are. And they're paving the way for the Antichrist. Because what you don't understand is the Antichrist, he's religious. He's not going to come and be like, Hail Satan 666 on my forehead. I mean, he's not going to come like that, okay? Read the Bible, that's not how he comes. But that's exactly what, it, what this version, these versions are preparing for. If not, then why did they take man out of all of it? Why did they change it? Why did they mix it up? Why did they take it all out? Now, they may have had one reason, but the devil certainly had his reason. Remember that. Father, thank you so much for your words. Thank you for the truth. I'm thinking we can hold this King James Bible. Know it's the inspired, infallible, perfect word of God and won't apologize for it. Lord, help us to live by those words. And Lord, we pray for those that are stuck in the transgender movement, Lord. They're stuck in sodomy. Lord, we pray that they'd be delivered from that. We pray they'd repent of their sins and turn to Jesus Christ and have forgiveness. We know the power of the gospel is Jesus Christ, that he is the power of God, that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation, that Jesus Christ has the power to forgive sins. And by his blood, he'll wash away all sin. Lord, we pray that, he, that anyone who hears this, Lord, would either be corrected and stop using the Bible versions that are perverted, and Lord, they'd start using the true words of God. Lord, we pray for others who are stuck in there, that they'd be saved, they'd get right with you. Help us now, Lord, as we go the way, we, your way, Lord, we pray that you'd bless us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.